Jeff, it's Mike and Don. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? Will you ever buy um, dinner for your brother again, or is he the guy who's always treating them? <laughs> right? Exactly. Right? 35 mil. <laughs> listen, if, if, listen, if I ever have to take my wallet out again, it's a <laughs> disgrace. <laughs> what a great gig, huh? I mean, he gets to run the uh, show. That's every coach's dream, right? Listen, and it's, it's not, you know, people say, you know, it's, it's about control. It's really not about control. It's about the ability to um, surround yourself with the people that you think give you the best chance at helping a team succeed, both players, management people. And I'll tell you what, you look at the Spurs, a model organization, Doc Rivers, what he's done in L.A., those are the two people that have a similar situation. And what you don't ever see in those organizations in fighting. And I think that's critical to success. And uh, some of that is because they're winning all the time. But even some teams that win have infighting uh, over, you know, power and blame and credit. And so I hope it really works out. They've got a long way to go. You know, they've, I think they've had five straight uh, losing seasons, last three under 30 wins, which is hard to do in the NBA. Uh, and so they got a long way to go. But, you know, it is a great opportunity. I know he's really looking forward to it. All right, Steve Kerr takes the job at Golden State, kind of leaves the Knicks now looking for another coach. Is this the epic fail that some have painted it to believe for Phil Jackson not getting the guy he wanted all along? You know, I think there's there tends to be an overreaction uh, and a labeling of – uh, whether a player goes to a different spot or Steve Kerr. Listen, uh, I, I had no inside knowledge. I'd only talked to Steve one time uh, since his whole interviewing process had been going on. Uh, but the Warriors, to me, always made more sense uh, from the standpoint of he's, he's got a daughter who plays volleyball right in the Bay Area. He's got a son in college in San Diego. He's got another one in high school in San Diego. And it would make it very easy for his wife uh, to commute back and forth. And they're a heck of a team. Um, you know, Mark did some remarkable things there, elevating them from a very, very losing franchise to a, a, a team that's got a real chance. And, you know, their roster is in good shape. Uh, I think everybody really has high respect for their general manager and Bob Myers. He knows the owner uh, socially, he's dealt with Bob Myers when he was a general manager and Myers was an agent. So it, that may, always made sense to me. Um, and I was always perplexed while everybody thought it was, you know, the Knicks because of his relationship with Phil Jackson uh, would have been impossible to turn down. See, I, I always have felt that Phil Jackson wanted what's best for Steve Kerr. And you know, he gave him the go-ahead to go pursue what was best for him. Steve did, and but I don't think that it's a gloom and doom thing in New York. Phil Jackson, he'll find a good coach. All right, so I'm going to play uniter here. I'm going to be the guy who makes this work. Jeff, you could coach the triangle. I know you could. You're a great coach. You could coach anything. So let's get you and Phil together, and you coach the Knicks. The job's open. <laughs> well, you know what? Listen, any coach, like if the, any coach would – coach, uh, you know, would be interested in the Knicks job, certainly. But everybody makes it like I'm not so sure that Phil Jackson, and maybe he, maybe he will, but I'm not sure that he's going to require someone to coach exactly like he did. I, I think what he wants to do, like any president or general manager, is to share similar philosophies. And you can have similar philosophies without coaching exactly the same and i've seen the names that have been thrown out and all of them are good names uh, derek fisher ty Lu, uh who's an assistant with the clippers who played for phil in la all those guys would would do it with some principles that phil believes in certainly but they'd also have their own thoughts on how to do things and i think the thing you have to do in coaching guys is you have to be yourself so not everybody uh can have a zen mentality. Some people are a little bit more uh, high-strung. But that doesn't mean you don't share the same values of uh, ball movement, player movement, guarding, uh, you know, how to deal with high-quality players. So you can 
share similar values without having the same exact way of, of, go, of going about coaching. Another opinion with the Kerr situation, Jeff, is that maybe the Knicks should have thrown more money at him, convince him to come here. But I've always felt, Jeff, that's dangerous. If a guy doesn't want to play here and he's only going to come here because you paid him more, then you really have to wonder how badly the guy wanted to be here in the first place. Well, look, I mean, I could probably get you at another station uh, if I gave you two more years and, you know, just reading the rumors out there, let's say eight more million dollars. I, I think right. I could pull you away from your station. Um, and, and to say that money isn't important in a deal, I think is naive. Of course it should be important. You know, you're, you're working to provide for your family, and, um, and so years and money are important. But I also agree with you that just because one team offers you a certain amount doesn't mean another team has to. Now, I have to say, I am a little bit surprised that the way Phil feels about Steve and Steve feels about Phil, that it didn't get done before the Warriors even became, you know, a part of the equation. That's that's what I'm saying. That, that's why I think it's a fail by Phil. He left it out there too long, and once your brother took the Pistons job, then the Warriors were desperate to get Kerr. You left the door open. You had to sign it sooner. Well, but maybe, you know, and again, everything is speculation. It's like I really don't know what the, the money was or the, the years were. Maybe, maybe it was an equal offer. Um, I'm unsure about that. And so then maybe Steve just took the, you know, the job that he felt most comfortable with. And I'm sure the family situation um, weighed heavily on him. Uh, if you're going to try to do something new for the first time and also do it 3,000 miles away from where the rest of your family is going to live, I'm sure that would, you know, give you trepidation. And, and so, you know, I think he might have dragged it out, too, where he's trying to, gather more and more information and get more and more comfortable with this decision. And ultimately he decided to go to the Warriors. And I think he's going to be an outstanding coach. I mean, I, he's a fine person, uh, tremendous basketball guy. I think he's going to do a great job.